I shouldn't be saying this in front of the camera. No. Um, <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick. My background is in neuroscience and I study how the visual system works. Visual processing is a really big challenge for the brain. The eyes are continually confronted with this ongoing barrage of information. We've got things that are moving, we've got colourful objects, we've got lots of different orientations and shapes and objects. The visual system has an amazing challenge. It's got to cope with a continual barrage of information and it's got to represent that in some way that it can actually drive perception. After the eye, information gets passed to the primary visual cortex, and it's just one of over 30 specialised regions within the brain, and they all have different specialised functions. So some specifically process motion, some specifically process faces. And so the way that we think about the way the visual system works is that we have this barrage of information coming from the external environment, and that's represented in patterns of electrical activity within the brain. Those patterns of electrical activity are essentially what drives our perception, and drive our behaviours. Within the brain, we've got on the order of 100 billion neurons. From those neurons, we can do things like recognise our grandmother and we can recognise our friends. And so that leads us to wonder, is there an individual neuron in our brain that's active when we see our grandmother? Actually, to be able to recognise your grandmother depends on the activity of populations of neurons, all of which respond to different features or aspects of faces. The fundamental thing that I'm interested in is a concept called plasticity or adaptation in the brain. How does the brain change its sensitivity, change the way it represents information based on the environment that it's currently in? Really dynamically, on orders of milliseconds through to seconds. Adaptation is this really important uh, phenomenon in the brain because it helps us to focus on things that are changing. So for example, if you're out in a bright, sunny environment and you walk into a cinema, you've changed the illumination around you and for a brief period of time in the cinema, you won't be able to see anything. But your visual system will adapt to the new statistics of the luminances, or the light levels around you, and then you'll be able to see again. So your brain's scaled its sensitivity to match what's around you in the world. And what your brain's really doing is adapting out that irrelevant information so that it can focus on new objects that have entered your visual field or things that have changed. The brains really love statistics. They can map out the statistics of the environment and they can match their sensitivity to that. And that's really efficient. It's a really optimal solution to how the brain represents the world. You might wonder why we need adaptation. Why don't we just perfectly represent what's out there in the world? And the challenge is that our brains are limited to being within the skull. We're limited by how much energy we can intake in during the day. We've just got limitations on the number of neurons that we have to represent information. And so it's continually changing its point of sensitivity. A lot of people really don't like statistics. Brains really love doing statistics because it helps them optimize their sensitivity to the world.